Hello, dream chasers. You have goals, you're driven, you have a plan. But have you ever felt the weight of your ambition and your dreams? Today, we're going to explore all the fascinating ideas around the pursuit of a dream or a goal, uncovering the challenges, the reasons behind them, and how to triumph over these challenges. So this video is for everyone who has a big dream, a small ambition, whatever it is, but they face the challenges of pursuing them. If you're curious about how your temperament influences that journey, stay tuned. Welcome back to The Mirror. In this series, we bring you resourceful content to help you burn, re build resistance, resilience and reliance so that you can gain a sense of self-mastery along your personal development journey. So for all the newbies, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you never miss new episodes. Okay, let's get into it. I've always been a dreamer, a goal setter. I can remember even being a teenager and my mother would tell me, you always have to have goals. You have to have long-term goals, medium-term goals, and short-term goals. And you match your savings to suit those goals. So short-term savings, mid-term savings, long-term savings. But that's another episode. However, the path to realizing those dreams can be filled with challenges and anybody who has ever pursued a goal can identify with that I am sure. Today I'm sharing my story and some of the added insights that I've learned along the way and from others. Um, we're going to put all of that into understanding your temperament and how it can make a difference in the pursuit of your dreams. So we have all kinds of goals. They may be centered uh, around relationships, your health, your career advancement, your education. You may want to travel somewhere specific. You may want to learn to play a particular sport, even an instrument yes I still have not given up on karate it's it's I'm going to do it one day <laughs> so lots of people want to maybe even start a side hustle read a book run a marathon walk a marathon for some of us some may want to get more me time more rest read a book watch a movie they've been trying to watch obviously these are smaller goals but they still apply and still many of us want to give our lives in service to other people. I'm all about positivity and speaking life into things and manifestation. But there is another side to ambition that I want us to think about today. Some people post their dreams and their big visions and shout from the proverbial rooftops on social media. Others very quietly carry the tremendous weight of their ambition all alone. So in this episode of The Mirror, we'll be talking about the different types of ambitions and we'll ask ourselves some tough questions. We'll talk about the path to those goals and your uniqueness that you bring to every goal and ambition that you have. We'll talk about how you need to maintain a sense of balance. And then we'll talk about some of the less enticing things of ambition. Of course, we often see the sexy side, but we know that's not all there is to it. Um, we'll talk about how we can maximize our temperament in the pursuit of our dreams. So our personality temperaments, we know they have, they come with their strengths and their weaknesses. We'll talk about how that will impact you possibly negatively, but also how it can impact you positively uh, in the pursuit of your dreams. So why should we pursue dreams? Why should we even have goals? Rhonda, I, I, I don't, I can't even think of a goal. Why should I even have a goal? Well, there's a lot to be gained from having a sense of ambition. We should have some level of ambition. I'm not saying you have to aim for something, you know, just totally out there, but there should be something that you're you're working towards or some dream that you had even as a child you may have thought is dead and gone. It may not be. Give it a chance to breathe. Let it live again. 
So there's personal growth. The pursuit of your dreams often leads to profound personal growth. I know the goal is about the destination, but along the way, there's so much to learn, so much to, to, to gain, you know, so much to, to develop, people to meet, relationships to foster. It's fascinating to pursue a goal and a dream. You know, you might have an introvert who discovers a new way to express themselves. So, for example, the pretty reserved, quiet young lady who decided to push herself into making videos on Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. And here we have it. You can also be a positive influence. Ambition can inspire people to, you know, push themselves, do more. You can have a determined leader who motivates his or her team to do extraordinary things. You can truly impact those around you. When you have a dream, a goal, you can inspire them to go for a little more, to do a little more, to become a better version of themselves. And this, of course, the overall contribution to society at large. You have ambitious people who drive innovation and progress. You know, you have visionary scientists who change the world every day inventors they have goals and visions and we reap the benefit of all of their hard work now with all of this amazing stuff there are a few cautions and these are some of the things i want us to consider when you look around you see many successful people whatever your definition of success is understand that ambition is a, a mix of joy pleasure, accomplishment, uncertainty, and everything in between. It can be very lucrative. Your ambitions can put you in a position to be very wealthy, earn a good living. Um, you have this relentless force driving you to make a difference. But the truth is, it can become exhausting. Even when you're making progress, you don't see the world like everyone else does. Your mindset is unique. Your vision is clear and probably a little unusual. Your dreams are larger than life and sometimes they seem beyond reach. At least that's what those around you keep telling you, right? You have the ability to identify opportunities and that mental constant clicking, tick talking of the mind, the onslaught of ideas and possibilities that you see everywhere. That can be filled with pain. That can be filled with fear. It can be overwhelming. It can become quite daunting. Be careful also. This is another thought I had. Be careful that you're not defining success by other people's standards or you're not, not letting other people define success for you you don't want to arrive at a destination after having gone through hell and high water to get there only to realize that you attained someone else's definition of success that would be a very harsh reality to be faced with so ditch others definition of success achieve success on your own terms be who god created you to be that's when you will get true fulfillment also you want to avoid the trap of doing more and more just for the sake of doing more and more pause at each junction determine how much further you honestly want to go how much further do you need to go and still be able to have some semblance of peace don't live on autopilot just going after some random ambition don't get lost chasing dreams so there are challenges of having dreams and ambition. So what are some of those challenges? What are some of the things that you might be faced with? Of course, there's an element of pressure and stress, unfortunately. Pursuing ambitious dreams can lead to immense pressure and stress due to the desire to succeed. You have this thing that's driving you and sometimes it may not even be something that you really want to do, but you, you just can't escape something on the inside of you that keeps, that keeps pushing you. And then, of course, you have the fear of failure. 
ambitious individuals often fear failure because you're putting yourself out there. You're doing something different. You're doing something new. You're doing something you haven't done before, possibly. That can create fear. And that fear can actually be quite paralyzing. And that, will, that can actually hinder your progress. Then, of course, a balancing act. Striking a balance between your personal life, your work, your ambitious goals. All of that can be challenging and that can lead to burn out but you still have to find a way to try to enjoy your life you have to keep living and then you have those around you the naysayers you might have lots of criticism from external people people who sometimes mean well but they don't understand what you're trying to do and they don't understand what's driving you and then of course you have the self-doubt you have your own criticism from your own mind we talked about imposter syndrome and we've talked about so many different things and so many different mindsets that you are battling on your own because of your ambition and that can be emotionally taxing and just as a quick point i do have a link in the description with uh, a list of affirmations that can help you keep your mind right keep you focused keep you achieving so if you're interested in that you can go ahead and you can uh, click the link that's in the description it'll take you to that download all right so how does this practically express how how do we practically see the the burden of ambition showing up in our lives. So you might have an entrepreneur who's totally burnt out. Why? Because they're working long hours to achieve their business dream. They are likely so burnt out and they're struggling to maintain balance between, you know, their personal life and what they're trying to pursue. You might have an, an artist and I love the artist because yeah I just I love artistic people and so when I say oh, it could be somebody in theater somebody in dance somebody who is writing a book a poem somebody who's building uh, a personal brand on social media so you're creating videos and content and graphic and design all of these are artistic expressions but an aspiring artist can be very afraid to show themselves, to show the work, the fear of the criticism, all of that leading to self-doubt, troubling thoughts, and stagnation. So all of that comes with the ambition that you're pursuing. You might have a student, and when I say student, I mean a child or an adult learner, and they have high academic goals. They want to achieve. They want to make themselves proud. They want to make their family proud. But that comes with its own level of fear and anxiety to constantly produce excellent grades and results. Um, you have the professional who they may have their career aspirations um, and they're striving either to get into to break into a new career or maybe advance in their existing career. And that goal can absolutely cause significant stress because they have to manage what they're trying to accomplish and with their personal lives. And of course, again, some of the other self-doubt and thoughts that we've considered. And sometimes you're dealing with pushback from other people. You have career goals. Other people have career goals. These goals may clash. And then, of course, that's a whole new level of stress. So let's take it down a little. Having goals and dreams are essential, but they're not without their challenges. And I just want to ensure that you're not blindsided. I want you to I want you to count the cost. I, I want you to be prepared, not derailed. I don't want to dissuade you from reaching the stars. But I want you to remember that the reason they shine is because of tremendous heat. So take the shine, but know you'll get some heat too. I just want you to be ready. All right. When we return, we will explore the topic from the perspective of our four temperaments. Welcome back. Remember, each temperament type has inherent personal traits and idiosyncrasies that determine their unique approach and outcome in different situations. So let's take a look at 
the reasons for some of the burdens faced with ambition and how your temperament can both assist you and how it can actually uh, negatively impact you. So let's get some balance. And I want you to be able to be aware of how it may uh, negatively impact you, but how you can actually maximize your temperament to accomplish your goals. So let's talk about our choleric. So these are our ambitious, passionate, dominant people. Uh, when that's mixed with their ambition, they they may face the challenge of excessive ambition because they're already naturally, um, innately ambitious. And that can lead to a lot of high pressure situations and potential burnout. So you have a super driven entrepreneur or a, a CEO and they're constantly pushing for perfection, pushing to accomplish. And of course they will struggle. Not a good look, but because they're naturally ambitious, that ambition can drive them to accomplish amazing things. We have our fun-loving sanguines, the social butterflies. Now, when you combine that with a sense of ambition, these people can create amazing networks. They can make great connections. They can facilitate that process by um, when with these great connections allows them to get awesome opportunities because you're so good at that interpersonal uh, aspect of, of things. And so that can really drive them forward. People just want to help them because they like them and they're, they're wonderful people. So from that perspective, it's really awesome. But that same social nature can actually become a distraction in two ways. One, they, they may pursue social events over um pursuing their ambition. So times that they should be spent doing some work, they're out having fun, engaging with people, or maybe they're attending a social event with the purpose of pursuing their ambitions. Maybe you're networking with the right people and that's kind of thing, but they get totally distracted because they're so enjoying the engagement that they forget that they're there with a business purpose. So that's some of what you have to be mindful if you are a sanguine or if you know a sanguine. Phlegmatic. So these are our logical thinkers. They're super chill. Now, if you mix that with ambition, you can see there's a little bit of contradiction there already. Super chill, ambition. So their secondary temperament might be something that has uh, uh, an element of ambition, but you can see that's going to create a little bit of conflict because I just want to relax and chill and not really do anything much and you want me to to drive forward so there's the, uh, they'll create a little bit of of conflict there but if this person can get a nice balance that person will not experience burnout because they'll push and then they'll chill and stop so that's the advantage a sense of balance is is easier to create if they can have the ambition drive them forward the challenge they face would be the passivity and that may cause them to miss opportunities. So for example, you have someone who wants to apply for a particular job, they, they have the desire, but their passivity just doesn't let them do it. And if you ask them, they probably can't tell you why, because they have literally no good reason why. Or, you know, you have a, an entrepreneur who's phlegmatic, they, there's a grant that they want to apply for and they miss the deadline. Why? They couldn't tell you. They just did. Yeah. Then we have our melancholic. So these are our thinkers and our feelers and they're driven by perfection. You mix that with ambition and you can have some amazing qualities. You can have someone who, because they're perfect and because they're thinking and because they're so analytical, they can create some incredible ideas and they can you know, they can really delve deep. They can get really granular with something that they're working on and the results can be astounding. But because of that same uh, tendency, it can also hinder them because they get too wrapped up in their thoughts and they have a lot of self-doubt and the criticism. And although they are highly skilled, they doubt themselves so much that they may not actually produce at the level that they potentially could. So there you have it. So what I want you to do is be aware of, of where you may get tripped up, but also maximize the strength that you have with your particular temperament. So 
Let's talk about some broad recommendations to address some of these challenges. First of all, start off by setting realistic goals. I have a friend, he prides himself <laughs> on low bars. Sometimes I actually call him low bar. Uh, and, and, it's, and I tease him, but it's not necessarily a bad thing because sometimes we set goals that are so far off, they make us tired to even try to reach them. So set achievable goals. And when you get there, Who's to say you can't set another one? So set achievable goals so you don't feel overwhelmed. Then you need to prioritize your goals. You can't just have a goal and not do anything with it. That might cause you stress too. Uh, so assuming that they're attainable, I want you to now prioritize them. Then time management. We have to manage our time. Otherwise, we're not going to get anything done. Life is going to go all crazy and out of black. We have lots of technology. Use the technology. You have apps for everything that you can think of. You have calendars. You have timers. You have, you know, you have post-it apps. You have um, checklist apps. You have all sorts of apps to keep you uh, organized and manage your time. Use the apps. Don't just play Candy Crush or whatever it is we're playing these days. Now, resilience building. I may actually have to do a full episode on resilience building techniques, but some of what we're talking about fits into that, but there are others. So we need to learn how to build resistance so we can bounce back from setbacks. What we try to do is fail forward. Yes, you may experience failures, but you need to keep persevering. persevering. Learn something, keep it moving, keep going. You have to keep trekking. And of course, you need to seek support, build a network of support. And that might be family, that might be mentors, that might be friends. Some people may understand the specificity of what you're doing. Others may not understand, but they just, they're just rooting for you anyway. So keep people around you because you're going to need them for the journey. You're going to need that emotional support for the days where it's just too hard. And like I will talk about every episode, self care. Self-care routines are essential. You have to maintain your physical and your mental well-being. So that's going to help you navigate your daily challenges a bit more effectively. I like to go for walks. I like to read. I like to read. I just don't actually get time to read, but that's a different story. But I always have a book around me in case I want to read. Um, I like to do audiobooks because I like to walk and I like to listen. So I can, it's a, a twofold for me. I love to multitask. I don't know how good that is, but I love to do it. It works for me. You may want to be able to do other things. For you, it might be to cook a meal. It might be watch a movie. It might be spending time with your beautiful granddaughter, like I get to do. It might be time with your family. It might be a swim in the beach, an extra long shower, whatever it takes that you enjoy doing that helps you maintain your sanity. All right. The last thing, appreciate the milestones. Enjoy the moment. Celebrate everything that you accomplish along the way. Embrace the ambition. Stay balanced. I celebrate everything. I open a new business account. I celebrate. I make a great new contact. I celebrate. I produce a new video. I celebrate because I know the effort that it takes, what I have to put in to, to create this material and content. So I celebrate. Celebrate along the way. Otherwise, what's the point? Otherwise, why are you doing all of this? We're not just working hard for the sake of working hard. You need to get some sort of joy, some sort of pleasure, some sort of peace, some sort of out of it. So celebrate the moments. Now, so let's wrap it all up. The pursuit of our dreams is not without challenges, but understanding your temperament and the impact that it has on your approach to dealing with the challenges that you're facing can help you appro approach them proactively and you can help you navigate the path more effectively. Great accomplishments are never attained easily. They often require hard work, dedication, perseverance, and sometimes overcoming significant challenges. But it's important to remember that your path to success is rarely a straight line, and setbacks and failures are often part of that journey. However, it is very, it's in these challenges 
that you can accomplish lots of personal growth and ultimately make the achievement of great goals all the more satisfying. So when you're facing obstacles on your way to success, remember it's a natural part of the process. And with determination and resilience, you can overcome them and achieve your goals. Embrace your ambition, set achievable goals, seek support and triumph over your adversity. So if you found this video valuable, even a little bit, please share it. Please like it. Leave a comment about your own dream chasing journey. What are you chasing this week, this month, this year? We're inching towards the end of the year. What is it you said you wanted to accomplish? You still have time. Do it. Okay. So I've created, as I mentioned, a list of daily affirmations to get you in the right headspace and keep you there. It's going to help you to create positive thoughts and have a healthy response when you're dealing with the darker side of ambition. All right. So thank you so much for joining me on this exploration of ambition and dreams, the dark side on the mirror. Until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep shining.